Hello, today I'm going to do the game Tyrannosaurus Rex from Fantasy Games Unlimited from 1985. It comes in the form like a, a magazine, magazine shape. You know, so it's like a you know, 8.5 by 11 kind of thing. It's a little bit different than other games of size. Like for instance, Ares has some magazine games, but they're actually, there's a magazine around them and then the game inside. But this is the entire game here, so it's a little different that way. Uh, the general premise is that there's a hunters from the future and they're going back in the past to hunt dinosaurs. So, so that's, I mean, the art's nice, I think. A little bit of theme in the back. It seems to be pretty good quality. It's, I mean, the cover is like a thick, well, it's a medium cardstock. So, a bit of theme. Tyrannosaurus Rex is a science fiction game for two to four players, and actually, you can do it solitaire as well, depicting a hunt for the biggest game imaginable dinosaurs. Each player controls one hunter who has traveled into the past. And time machine to try and win fame and fortune by becoming the most successful dinosaur killer. So that's the theme. And then I'll, and then within here, you know, there's um, rules. I mean, maybe like eight pages of rules or so. And then there's also these uh, eight cards inside here. Actually with the game, then the map and the counters are in here as well, but obviously you take those out. I guess you could take out these eight cards as well, but I just left them in there. And there there's a hunter record sheet, which also is in there. Dinosaur record sheet and then Concluding with the rules and you know, scenarios, so it's well done. So it's a good mix of counters. Um, so I've shown. I mean, these are are all the counters, you know. Here, the unique ones are are here. Um, I'll talk in detail. And they're all. Any uh, thing that's not super great is that they're not like pre-cut punched out you actually you know cut them out of this like thin cardstock which isn't you know super ideal but um, but I mean they're have some you know gloss to them and they seem like they would hold up pretty well so I'm not doesn't bother me too much so it's showing that there's a good mix of counters so as far as the different types of counters first of all you have the the dinosaurs that you'll be hunting, and there's obviously Tyrannosaurus, Tyrannosaurus is I guess there's uh, there's five of those Stegosaurus um, there's three of those Trachodons there's four of those Triceratops. Um, three of those, uh, one pterodon, one brontosaurus, four struthiamias, struthiamias, pardon my pronunciation, and two ankylosauruses, and then two tylos tylosaurus. So those are the dinosaurs that you'll be hunting. And then there's hunters. So there's, you know, the four different hunters. These are the characters. Um, each of the hunters has a rifle, so those are shown. These are, uh, each of these are hand retrieval devices for basically getting the dinosaurs back to the time machine. Are these are rifle retrieval devices. Again, same thing. Uh, stun is to indicate a hunter is stunned. Turn, obviously, a turn marker. Lost indicates a hunter is lost. Quake indicates a hex where there's an earthquake. Seam indicates 
um, steam coming from near where lava flows are. An indicator for each hunter um, indicating if it's wounded. Uh, charging dinos, lava. Um, and this is the uh, hunter action order way to randomize, you know, what, you know, at what turn the hunter goes in. Debris from volcanic eruptions. Um, and then indicating a you know, lava flow marker here. And then there's, you know, time machine markers. So the, it's like I said, they're thin, but they seem surprisingly robust. And this is like, uh, over 40 years old, so it's hold, held up well. Um, I, I personally like the art. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of um, TSR's Awful Green Things from Outer Space a little bit, that kind of kind of art. Um, but I think it's it's kind of uh, it's kind of fun and good. So um, yeah, I think they're a good. And actually, as far as the thickness, I, they do say in the rules they uh, they um, give the option, which is nice of them to say, to add um, you know backing to this to make them thicker counters. But actually, I mean, I might do that after I go through here. But actually, I think um, with the size of the board and how big the counters are, I think I'll just leave them as they are because I think if you make them thicker. You might, when you stack, it might be kind of make it a little bit difficult to manage on the board. So I think I'll just keep them like that, and I think they'll work out fine. So as far as the map goes, um, also I might mention, I mean, obviously since it's like a magazine kind of game, it doesn't come with dice, but, um, I, you know, you need two dice. And actually, I, I got these two dice from another Fancy Games Unlimited game, Star Explorers, and so... Those days just kind of be a completist, I guess. Um, so the map, I think it's very well done. It's fairly small, obviously, because it just folds out um, from the inside of the the magazine. Just folds, you know, one time. So, um, but there's different terrain um, indicated there, and on different terrain, there will be different events that can happen. So there's uh, there's savanna terrain, which is just kind of you know light greenish. There's jungles, which is you know as it's shown. Uh, Ford hexes, where you can cross here. These two uh, volcano hex. Um, island hex. And then the time machine entry hexes are indicated with the letters here. So basically uh, A through K. Yeah. So that's the, the hexes and, and the river here. And then it shows the uh, turn sequence, you know, the time machine entry hex. And you have to randomize that. And then so the random motion of the dinosaurs you roll the, the six eyed dice and this shows you which you know, direction they would go from their hex. And, and this does show you that the counters are pretty big for the, a little bit maybe oversized for the hexes. But, so. Time machine return table. So, um, so obviously afterwards you want to return back to the future. Um, and if you um, so if a, if time machine is moved during the play, you, um, you subtract one from the die roll, and if, so obviously initially you'd be fine, but if you get a, a zero or less on a die roll and you have to add these modifiers, you basically, uh, will not be able to go back to the future, so to speak, so, this is the, um, direction hexes that uh, earthquakes kind of go out. 
uh, likelihood of earthquakes happening, where the earthquake happens, you know, volcanic eruption table, um, where the eruption debris goes, and this is a, you know, the turn marker, and on this, this is, uh, you, L's would indicate, you know, potentially lava flows, EQs are potentially earthquakes, and you kind of roll for those different things happening. And then this is the sequence of, you know, what the turn of the different, you know, hunters. So that's the components. I mean, I think it's very well done. So um, then we'll look at the rules. So I'll go through the rules then. During the course of the hunt, the players must determine which dinosaurs to shoot based on the point values of the dinosaurs, range, terrain, line of sight, ammunition supply, and even take into account how many turns remain in the game. Also, in order to have a bag dinosaur return to the future, a retrieval device must be successfully placed in a dinosaur after it's been killed. Okay, so that's kind of, you know, the theme. And then, you know, game components we talked about, tables and charts. There's the hunter record sheet that each hunter has. And I'll show how that's used, but it's basically tracking, you know, what they have, what they've accomplished, and um, the points they've developed, achieved. One of those for each hunter. And then a dinosaur record sheet which you keep track of the dinosaurs that you've killed and were able to successfully return back to your time. And here's the various dinosaur values where it, uh, the dinosaur and then how many hits it took to kill them affects the dinosaur values you get. And then there's the hunter encounter table. So part of this is when you go into different terrains you have you well even when you stay there from previous turn there's you have a chance of an encounter and you know rolls of there's no encounter in some rolls then on others um, for instance juggle you might see a snake um, a quicksand poisonous plant carnivorous plant um, identified reptile or lost um, and then you have various levels of success on that. So you may, if you're successful, you may scare it off, but you lose one ammo for a snake, get bitten, um, and you get, may hunt, get stunned or die. Quicksand, uh, you may get out, but your rifle is damaged, um, poisonous plants. Um, and you, that affects your rolls, etc. So a lot of neat options there. Island, a pterodon may attack you. River, um, and quicksand again. Water animal, pterodon. Savanna, giant dragonfly, identified reptile, pterodon. Uh, Ford, quicksand, water animal, Trinodon. Then damage to dinosaur. So if you, so first you see if you hit a dinosaur and the likelihood of that is based on your range and the type of dinosaur. So it's a 1d6, you do rolls for that. Then if you hit them, then you determine how much damage you do. So, um, and that depends on the range, you roll 1d6, and it may be no effect, wound, or, or kill. So, and that varies on the, you know, the dinosaur. And then dinosaur to dinosaur. So, if a Tyrannosaurus is in a hex with another dinosaur, there'll be a dinosaur battle to the death or wounding, I guess. 
And so it shows it for transverse versus the different dinosaurs. You roll 1d6 and see what happens. Dinosaur versus hunter. So in some cases, some dinosaurs don't attack hunter, but others do. So a charging T-Rex um, with charge. And this is what happens. Trandan, Telsaurus, and uh, yeah, the other ones don't attack. Hunter to hit Trinodon, Trinodon to hit Hunter, those, those are those, those will come into play in the game. Uh, setup, and then I'll show setup as we do an example play. So the game turn sequence is actually shown on the board, but the highlights are here, but the sequence is, uh, you, you advance the turn counter, Roll for lava, quake, eruption, um, is necessary. And which ones you roll for is shown on the, the turn track. LAQ would be lava, eruption, quake, uh, for instance. Lava will happen, but eruption, quake are probabilities of happening. Um, dice random movement. You basically roll a 1d6, and then based on the uh, direction hex table, um, you know, you go, you know, one would be you go this way, two, three, four, five, six, that way. And then some some spaces you can't go in with a dinosaur, like lava, and I'll talk about more details there. Um, and then Dinosaur versus dinosaur, so if a Tyrannosaurus is on another dinosaur, there will be, you know, a battle during the table I discussed. Hunter movement, so Hunter moves one, and um, so that's what that is. And in some hexes, they can't move in. Uh, dinosaur versus Hunter, so, you know, referring again to the dinosaur versus hunter table if the hunter's in the same hex as you know a charging t-rex or triceratops there'll be a battle there or a you know, trandan or telosaurus um and then hunter encounter so wherever the hunter is they roll and based on the the train whether it's you know savannah jungle etc they go through the hunter table and counter table I discussed. Hunter action phase. Um, so there's uh, so the hunter action they can do if there's not an encounter. I mean, if there's an encounter, then the hunter doesn't do an action. But if, if there isn't an encounter, um, then he does an action. Um, so you can fire the dinosaur, uh, you can put a retrieval device on a dinosaur, you can retrieve a rifle or accessories previously, you know, set down or lost, um, you can remove a retrieval device, uh, you can move a time machine, for instance, if a lava flow is coming by, you want to move the time machine, or you can enter a time machine. So you only do one action, and you can't do it if you didn't encounter already. And then at the end of the turn, you uh, remove a stun or loss counters from hunter counters, remove the remix, the hunter action draw, because you you know you randomize you know which order you go in. Uh, remove tree or debris or quake counters. If the counter counters face up, and remove any steam counters from the board. So you repeat all this until um, you end the game, and so you, you repeat the turns until the number of turns identified by the scenario is completed. And they determine the transporting of hunters and dead dinosaurs to the future. 
team game notes. Um, and add up all the surviving hundreds of points and also roll for any stranded hunters so we'll talk about that. Uh, victory conditions um, so just do, so there's five scenarios and you go through the scenarios and then you total up your points at the end of the scenarios but if you're just doing one uh, the surviving hunter with the most points is the winner so and the campaign is all five so when you play all five the surviving hunter with the most points is the winner right? it's the same trick ties uh, all players who have tied for a high score play scenario um, but the game has changed only 10 turns to break ties have all the players who have tied for the highest score um, then play scenario 5 but with only game like exchange to 10 turns and no accessories trying hunter with the most points to the winner solitaire so you can do it solitaire which is great um, Solitaire twin tyrants on six playing Solitaire. One must survive all five scenarios and score more than 150 points. So that's nice you can do Solitaire. So then there's details. Um, I want to mention too in the previous stuff I discussed. Um, for instance, dinosaur versus dinosaur, there's a order precedence that you that the T-Rex will attack different dinosaurs if there's several in the hex. Uh, so Ace Hunter, if Hunter becomes Ace Hunter, uh, that happens if he achieves 75 dinosaur value points. And uh, can, I, can I only call it after a scenario. So if you're an Ace Hunter, uh, you had one to your die roll for all Hunter to hit dinosaur rolls, except charging T-Rex. Charting Triceratops. Uh, add one to die rolls for all hunter to hit. Tear down rolls. One die rolls for all firing a rifle. Retrieval devices. One to all damage to dance or hit rolls. Do not add one to initial die on a charging T Rex. Um, and you may subtract from your initial roll to determine if a counter occurs in jungle hex. Uh, do not add one to rolls to determine if accessory works successfully. Uh, may add one to initial to survival roll. Stranded. Uh, and Ace always performs his hunter action first in the hunter turn phase. Then as far as ammo goes, so it um, it's some kind of energy weapon, but it does use effectively you know, power ammunition each time. So whenever you take a shot, you mark off your ammunition box, and at some point uh, you'll run out. So <clears throat> it doesn't count towards ammo to do rifle retrieval devices. And then on the dinosaur record sheet. Um, you mark the number of wounds that a uh, dinosaur has and then the you indicate which hunter kills them. Um, others can do damage, but it's the one that kills them that gets credit. And then you circle it if you're able to retrieve it, and you put it X if you can't. Because retrieval isn't you know, automatic. Talked about dinosaur versus dinosaur. There's some complications, you know, how you do it if there's multiple tyrannosaurus. Um, you basically have two that are randomly chosen to fight each other. So, emergency movement. <clears throat> so, if a hunter becomes aware they can't make it back, to enter his time machine by the end of turn 20. Um, he may use emergency movement or he can move two hexes per turn in Savannah only, but he must you know, leave his rifle, ammo, retrieval devices, and all other accessories. 
and you can't do it just to run away from dinosaurs. So exceptions to general rules, if, uh, if dinosaurs are wounded, with the exception of Tyrannosaurus rex, Triceratops, Triceratops, Brontosaurus, anytime any other dinosaur receives a wound result from a hit by hunter, um, the dinosaur will not perform normal dinosaur random movement. It will continue, um, concerning, so will not perform normal dinosaur random movement in 16 turns, but will head for the nearest reachable jungle hux. Not including the one yet, or the hunter who we saw the dinosaur might be. So it kind of retreats to jungle hux. He had one per X per moment rate. He'll continue this fashion each exciting turn until he's killed or reaches jungle hex. He'll then remain there the following turn. So if a Tyrannosaurus or Triceratops wounded by Hunter, and the first wound of them, the T Rex tra Triceratops will do several things during the follow turn. On a 1d6, the wounded dinosaur, first and one 2 will charge the hunter shot. Moving two exits between two, three, it will charge the hunter nearest it. Two exits per turn. Four, five, six, the dinosaur will head, will charge the hunter who shot it. Four, five, six, the dinosaur will head for the nearest jungle. As per the instructions for the other data source. So, Hunter record sheet. Um, so we discussed that. It's uh, keep your accessories, your ammo, uh, how many movements you do of your time machine. And so, time machine movement. Um, so, um, how much you move it dictates how likely it is it won't be able to return in the future. So basically, um, initially it, there's no, you will return, but each time you move it, you deduct one from that roll. So lava flow, lava well, starts at the volcano and you um, randomize, you know, the direction of it on the 1d6 roll of what side it goes. And each, each subsequent turn until you run out of lava, it uh, it keeps spreading out, and you keep track of it by the lead lava flow. If it if it runs into a dinosaur or hunter, they're they're dead. If it goes into if it goes into water, it causes steam, and the steam isn't in, in each of the six hexes surrounding the lava filled river hex, so. It, the steam would go around there. And then steam then has effects of units can't go in there. Volcanic eruption. When eruption occurs, can will throw out debris in a random direction. In a random distance. To determine the direction. 1d6. And then 1d6 to look at the debris. Any dinosaur hunter, time machine, etc. are destroyed. <laughs> Earthquakes, the way earthquakes work, you, to figure out where, so you roll on the every third turn, you roll for an earthquake, and also for the eruption too, you roll for every third turn to see if an eruption happens, same for the earthquake. So if an earthquake happens, then you, on the table you determine where you roll, uh, uh, 1d6 and then you'll put it in the hex that says that and then for the it kind of ripples through so you you roll the 1d6 for direction and the distance so if you roll a 3 you'd go all the way out here and you put your quake markers and then you keep doing that uh, direction and distance keep building off that until you run out of quake markers or you know it goes off the board basically so it kind of goes, and anything on there is destroyed. Line of sight. So you can fire at range, but, um, but there needs to be line of sight. So line of sight is blocked 
if it crosses volcano or volcanic side, block to it crosses island or side of an island. Um, if dinosaurs and jungle may be fired on, but Thunder must be within two hexes and his shot is at a minus one on die roll. Minus five is blocked if it crosses a hex containing a steam counter. Um, hex is a hex size of lava flow, may, not, may be fired through, but at a minus two on die roll. Island hex is not a jungle hex, it can be fired into, but not through, up to full range. Savannah Ford, River, do not block the last sight. Dinosaur Hunters, do not block the last sight. And in some encounters, you become a lost hunter. And then you would indicate with a lost, unless you have a compass, which is an accessory. So you put a lost in the hunter. And um, until the end of the following turn. So the hunter must. You have to basically stay in that hex, so return. Uh, prohibited hexes, dinosaurs, may not enter into river hexes. So as far as steam, uh, so if steam's generated where dinosaurs, basically you randomize a roll to get out. If they randomly move out of the steam into an otherwise prohibited hex, they're removed from play. So. For instance, if we went to, into lava. Uh, Brontosaurus and Tessaurus will never move into a prohibited X to steam effects. They just stay where they're at. The hunters in there, they basically uh, randomize to move out. If they move into a steam X, their rifle is damaged. Talk about Pteranodan, talk about range. It's retrieval objects. There's uh, there's handheld retrieval devices, and then there's um, rifle retrieval devices. Handheld, the hunter places it on, manually places it on the dinosaur there. Um, the rifle is shot by rifle at range, using the same range you would for rifle, and if a hit result is scored, um, uh, then you are able to place it on. Uh, they're waterproof. So the retrieval devices don't automatically transport. Um, on a roll of 2, 3, 11, and 12, they fail to transport, otherwise they do. A little bit of rifles. Uh, it's a force beam if it gets wet. Its range is indicated as shown in the counter charts or by steam rolls. Um, I may take a rifle and ammo with them across the river. May not take because um, it would render it useless. So he has to um, basically drop it and then pick it up later. If Hunter is moving a time machine, he must place his rifle next to the in a time machine because he needs to. Um, can't carry his stuff to. Uh, or Fords. Fords cause no restrictions. And dinosaurs except Tylosaurus and Brontosaurus. And her river hex. Hunters may swim across the river. Um, again, without rifle or ammo. And there are several accessories it cannot carry. Uh, there's no limit to stacking. A stunned hunter may not move, fire, perform reactions, or may not turn. A train. Normal conditions, Snyder's hunters may move one. Except for the exceptions. Um, for, to use the time machine, he has to enter the hex of the time machine and then put his counter under it, 200 keys in it. Um, so his turn is the, the entrance hex time machine. He must still roll for an encounter based on that. So once he's entered the time machine, he must re remain in for the rest of the game. The exception is Trent Hunter may enter a, enter a rescue time machine to get fresh ammo and leave it. If that, he may obey the restrictions. He may enter to avoid near dinosaur. 
Stunder lost under mana enter. To avoid lava flow, a hunter who is outside his time machine may move it one hex per turn. The hunter must leave his rifle and ammo on the hex. And he moves it. Um, a strand hunter stays in the hex occupied at the end of the scenario. And uh, when a 200 gets killed before this next scenario, 36 hunter survives. So a strand hunter may be either his time machine destroyed. Or went back to the future without him. Wounded Hunter, the first Wounded Hunter receives in encounters uh, affects his abilities and actions. Uh, put a wound. If Hunter cures his wound, move the Hunter, the wound. Uh, wounded, if it, he is wounded, subtract two from all Hunter to get dinosaur rolls. Um, Strike one for all damage to dinosaur. One who receives second wound is killed. And then scenarios. So there's five scenarios with different uh, monsters in different lo or dinosaurs in different locations, um, and different rules for you know, accessories and time machine placement. And one thing too, I touch on the hunter accessories. Um, so they they may take along with them snare to improve their chance of survival. So each accessory costs one dinosaur value point to purchase. Except for scenario one, you're given you can have one, but you lose one ammo. So scenarios are. Anti venom plant, anti venom snake, compass, lanyard, may west, medical kit. Medical kit cures wounds. May west helps to um, for quicksand. Lanyard. He doesn't lose his rifle in quicksand. Compass doesn't get lost. Anti venom snake. Um, Avoids, you know, venom in the snake encounter, into venom plant, and then avoids that in that encounter. So that's the rules. Then we'll uh, get into play. So I'll show a setup here before we get into play. So I'm doing uh, scenario one, and the uh, so setup is shown shown here. First thing we do is we set up. For the specific scenario, you set up the uh, dinosaur initial placement, and also for scenario one, um, in the scenarios after that, you you know purchase various accessories. Uh, but in scenario one, you haven't gotten any dinosaurs to get points for, so they let you take one accessory of your choice. Um, at no cost, but then um, you can only carry 14 instead of 15 rounds of ammunition. So that's how I, you know, I mark the ammunition there. Um, so the dinosaur initial placement, a brontosaurus on 79, triceratops on. 41, 48, and 132. T Rex on 46. One hundred seven and one forty seven Stegosaurus on fifteen fifty five one hundred five and 
and then Kilosaurus on 52 and 83 so some of these are in the savanna and some like this one are in the jungle Brontosaurus is on the island Trachodon on 30 97 103 112 the Struthiomimus pardon the pronunciation on 21 57 62 and 13 and the Tylosaurus is in 54 so as far as the uh, <clears throat> so I said in scenario one you get one accessory so for the accessory and the accessory options and the accessory options are, are shown there's anti-venom anti plant into Venom Snake, Compass, Lanyard, May West Medical Kit. So I chose um, the medical kit for Hunter 1. And each medical kit allows a hunter to try to remove the effect of one wound. And then for Hunter 2, I have the accessory of Compass. So if Hunter is carrying Compass, he may ignore any lost result in a jungle encounter. Maybe used throughout the game. It's not crossed off, so it's, that one seems pretty useful too. <clears throat> they each put their their hand three hand ret retrieval devices and three rifle retrieval devices on there as well. And and then they roll for the time entry hex. So I rolled for hunter, and then you use this chart here. So you roll, you know the nice. Um, for when I rolled, <clears throat> I got a a seven for Hunter One, which puts him on the F location. So he's there with his time machine. And then I rolled a five for Hunter Two, which puts him on the I location. And that's the uh, that's the setup. Then we'll we'll get into play. So we're. Uh, just finished turn five here, about to turn into turn six, and so I'd uh, so I'll go through a couple of rounds here and kind of give you a sense of how it plays. Um, first of all, I'll kind of show you where we're at here. So in uh, turn three, um, turns out had an earthquake and it actually spread out quite a bit. It actually took out three dinosaurs. Uh, Trachodon, a Triceratops, and a uh, Tyrannosaurus. And in each turn the lava flow goes, and you'll see right now, so it started here, and it's been moving here, and now it's in the, in the river. And during the flows it took out a Strathamus dinosaur. Um, and as far as what the hunters have been able to do, they've Hunter One has gone through. Um, he shot three ammo, and he was down one red because that's how the scenario goes. Um, so he's only he's got eleven remaining. Hunter Two has eleven remaining as well, and Hunter One. So as far as the dinosaurs, he had uh, wounded a Triceratops three times, which resulted in him killing it, and um, he was actually successfully able to retrieve that back and to import it back. So I circled that to indicate that, and I've shown the Triceratops here. 
Um, Hunter 2 has done 2 damage on a Trichodon 4 here. And they've not gone too far from their time portals. And also, uh, Hunter 2 had a uh, encounter with a giant dragonfly, but it didn't end up causing him any harm. Oops. So, uh, so that's the setup. Again, the lava started here and it moved out and now it's there. So now we'll start turn six. So I move the turn marker. We do lava, quake, and eruption. So on this turn, earthquakes and eruptions are an option. So we'll look at, uh, first let's do lava flow. So that, that happens. And so we look at the directional hex here. Let's see where it goes. Goes four. Uh, it's, it's already been there, so let's go two. It's he actually heading back up, it's heading up the river here. So, so now steam. Steam's going to pop up all around there. So there is a steam around that. And then let's see what happens as far as an eruption. It's no eruption. See if an earthquake happens on a six. So an earthquake does occur. So now let's see where the initial hex is. We were all six sided. It starts in one one six. Here. So now we figure out direction. So it goes up here. And direction again, six, goes two. So we'll do this until all the quake things are done. And I might note on the uh, so initial direction, you use this earthquake directional hex, and then after that you go on the others. Just fortune for that hunter. Goes across. So it's going to take out this Tyrannosaurus. It's actually going to take out the Tylosaurus. And it's going to take out a Stegosaurus. So that was pretty intense. So that's pretty intense. The quake took out quite a bit there. Just kind of spread out followed that path and unfortunately a few were on the fault line so took them out. So dinosaur random movement phase. So now some are in the steam and they need to get out of the steam. Uh, nothing else is in the steam. So I do random movement, six sided dice. So Can be a little bit time consuming, but Okay. So dinosaur versus dinosaur. So we do have a Tyrannosaurus on top of a Triceratops. So let's see how that goes. 
you look at the dinosaur versus dinosaur table. So let's do a roll. One. So the Triceratops evades T Rex, the encounter ends. Move Triceratops immediately to an adjacent hex by roll on a directional table. Okay. So he escapes. So Dinosaur Dinosaur Human Hunter. Let's do their movement. He's gonna start moving up here. He'll stay there because he's still going after Trocodon. There's no dinosaur versus hunter now because there's no dinosaurs there charging a hunter. So the hunter encounter phase. So we have. Well, first of all, let's see the order here. So. The order is, um, so Hunter 2 will go first to the encounter. That will affect their movement as well, but there wasn't anything significant in there. Um, so Hunter 2 is in Savannah. So let's see what encounter he has. 1 to 4. Um, yeah, no encounter. Okay. And then Hunter 1 is also in Savannah. 6, so he gets an encounter. And we'll roll, roll dice. 4. 3, 4, unidentified reptile. Roll 1, d6 again. 2. Hunter must fire a shot. He's scared off. He's up one ammo. So, so he loses one ammo. So that's not good. Mark that off. And again, the uh, the accessories they have. So, Hunter one does have a medical kit in case he gets wounded. He can use that. And Hunter 2 has a compass in case he gets lost. So, so that's the encounter. And now we do the Hunter action phase. So Hunter 1 can't do anything in this phase because he already used up his action during his encounter. So he's out of luck there. Hunter 2 though, he's got um, he only needs one more hit on the Trocodon to get that. Five. So to hit... First if you hit them. So Trocodon at a range of one. And also it's a uh, minus one on a die roll. Since he's in the jungle. Yeah, so we hit on like a... Two to six, so he hits him. And as far as the damage, three, range of one to a trucodon. Two six is a kill, so he kills him. He would have got him anyway because he uh, had two hits on him. So that was successful. And that'll be the end of that turn. Then we'll do one more turn. Pick up all the quake markers. And then also pick up the steam because the steam only happens like right when it goes in there. Okay. And now there's there's not earthquakes or eruption possibilities this turn, since it's not a third turn, but the lava does go. And it goes here. Okay. 
Okay, so nobody's affected by that. Dice are random movement. There's no dinosaur versus dinosaur because there's no Tyrannosaurus in hex with another dinosaur. Hunter movement. So he'll be going up to the Trucodon. He'll also be going up this way. Dinosaur versus Hunter. There's no dinosaurs charging hunters at this time. Hunter encounter. So then we'll see. Let's see again which which uh, hunter goes first. So one goes first this time. Let's see his encounter. He's in a savanna. Okay, he gets an encounter. Five. Trandan attack. Okay, so the Trandan's coming down to attack. So it's a Trandan attack. So so we go to the hunter to hit Trandan misses. So then the Trandan gets to attack. Gets a four. The Trandan beaks the hunter. One, the hunter is stunned. It's not good for the for Hunter One today. And also because the action he can't and being stunned he can't do anything in the attack. Um, then let's see the Hunter Two. He doesn't get any encounter, and then he'll do. Um, um, he did kill the Trucodon last time, which I, um, so he needs to retrieve it. He's already moved, so he can't do a handheld retrieval device, so he's going to do a, a rifle retrieval device. So, to attempt that, you shoot it like, uh, like he's just shooting a regular one. So, and it's to see if he hits. So it's that. One, it's minus one because it's in the jungle. Um, yeah, he does. He does do that. So, he, one of his RRD then is there to retrieve. So successful. Um, and that's the end of the turn. And the next one will be, uh, let me take that to indicate it's been retrieved. So that's Tyrannosaurus Rex from Fantasy Games Unlimited 1985. I'm very impressed. I think it's an awesome game. It's uh, hard to think much wrong with it. It's got a lot of interesting kind of natural effects and it's got, plays a really good solitaire. Um, some people might say it's not good, you have to cut out the counters, but I think actually they work fine, and I understand why they're thin, because they were intended to be able to be, you know, put in a Ziploc bag in the game, and actually if they were any thicker, I think it would be more difficult to move them around the board, so I think they're fine. Um, there's a lot of tactics to think about, strategy, um, I mean, you got dinosaurs and time travel, so that's pretty good. Um, I like the art, uh, I like all the, there's just enough depth to make it really interesting, but not too bad to make it, you know, overly complicated. Um, some randomization, but then also planning, I, it's really great. So, 
highly recommend it. Um, it's definitely one of the better you know, kind of magazine kind of games, I think. So I'll give it a 8 out of 10 and highly recommend it. Uh, Transformers Rex from Fancy Games Unlimited. Thanks.